Good evening, everyone. It looks like it's uh, five thirty, so we'll go ahead and call this meeting in order. We'll begin with the invitation. Doug, we'd like to ask for your guidance and wisdom as we make decisions to impact our city tonight, next week, and as far as we can as we possibly can. With your guidance and wisdom. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Rieger, the, the report that you were referring to. Okay, um, so the, the reports that we provided re reflect um, this year compared to last year for the month of June, as well as year to date. And so for the uh, water and sewer department, um, for the water uh, this year, for the year to date, we are actually ahead on the sale on the revenue side by approximately a hundred thousand um, dollars and that is is really a, a result of the the drier sure. drier weather 
Um, and then likewise, the sewer stays pretty flat from a revenue perspective, which is reflected on the sewer department's um, report. As far as the expenses, um, those actually are up just a little bit, um, and, and that just varies on the water side. The main breaks have some things to do with that. There isn't anything specific that I would be able to highlight um, that would have led to the differences. It just would have been, you know, maybe some breaks or some different maintenance that came into play this year over this year to date, this okay. time last year. That was, that was okay. Okay. You're welcome. Well, do we approve item number two? Second. Um, that motion passes. Thank you. Great regular agenda. Uh, item number eight is public hearing action on the community community development block grant program CDBG 2020 public works category application for a CDB CDBG eligible project in North Platte and approved resolution will authorize the submission of the application and supporting documents to the Nebraska Department of Economic Development. Is a public hearing. Does anyone wishes to speak? Mark Woods, 902 North Henry. My house sits on 9th Street. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> Mr. Kevin and, and the engineer, engineering department going out and taking a look at this. It's been done for a long time, and I'm encouraged that there's you know something going on now and that there's a grant in progress. I know, you know. May go, may not, but I appreciate the effort. I hope it does. I hope you'd all vote for it. This, this street really needs it. It's dangerous. The police will thank you. The firemen will thank you. The ambulance, the 1600 cars that drive up and down it every day. And I just hope it goes through. Thank you. Thank you. Rita Hernandez, 2121 West 9, former city council person. Um, and I'm sure Mr. Wake would also thank you because he drives his many miles um, through that road. And there's also a uh, individual that um, walks her dog. She is a, um, well, she's in a wheelchair. And um, a couple of days ago, I had to pull her out of the ditch because um, trucks go by, cement trucks. And you can check my uh, ringer if you'd like, because there's plenty of uh, doorbell ringers. There's plenty of uh, cars that go by at a higher speed than 25 miles to 30 miles an hour. So yes, we would appreciate if you all would uh, vote for this. It's been 30 plus years that um, this has been, we've been waiting for. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Kibben uh, and Brent for going to bat on this. Uh, and, and, uh, on behalf of my constituents, uh, this has been a major issue out there. And uh, I just want to thank you for the effort that you put forth and, and willing us to go take a look at it and, and apply for the, for the community block grant. And, and as Mr. Wood said, hopefully it will pass and we can have some street. Thank you. Yep, there's a second to the die. Can I get a vote? Oh, no one wants a vote? Well, I want to say something. Oh, sorry. Well, well you're for calling it. I think this is long overdue. I'm glad to see it. Hopefully it will pass. Thank you. What? Do you have something? No, I just was saying. Okay, thank you. Right. I just had a question for Judy. I can ask it now or after we post the hearing. Okay. 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 Okay.
Close public hearing. Public hearing closed. that we would uh, take the copy action of the Community Development Block Grants uh, 2020 Public Works Category application for a CDBG level project in North Platte and approve resolution authorizing submission of the application and supporting documents to the Nebraska Department of Economic Development. Second. Uh, Judy, just a quick question for you. And I'm, I'm in favor of getting this done on 9th Street, this really needs done. But one thing that caught my attention was the grant as a percentage of the total project, it was a little lower than what I thought it would be maybe compared to some others we've had in that general area. And so how does the percentage of cells eligible for grant get determined? And will, does this go ahead and bind us now to making that $1.3 million commitment? Or how how does the, what kind of funding commitments so are we making at this point in time? They have a limit on the amount that you can ask for. Okay. Um, 400000 is the top plus 25000 in administrative fees. We generally don't ask for administrative fees, but in this one I am. Um, it does only show the 400000 but that was before I realized that they did allow for an extra 25000 for um, administrative fees, so we will also ask for that. Um, as far as a match goes, the higher your match, the more you're going to score on the points for actually getting the grant. Um, this is a two-phase project, so we just took half of what the total cost would be and used that as our matching plus. We're not 100% obligated towards that because we're going to meet the maximum match to the one-to-one. -one. So we're going to score 100% on that match, meaning that we're going to put in 400,000. But to show them an extra match is good, but that won't tie us to that one point. What is it? 1.2 million. That's not going to tie us. We're going to half the match to 400. And so the reason it might be a little smaller as a percentage is that it's just a bigger project. It's just a bigger okay. project. It's a different category. Some of the categories, we haven't done a public works one in like two years. Um, most of them that we've been doing are the comprehensive community revitalization. And so those are a little bit different. They've discontinued that program. So this is the first time that we've done a public works pro program in probably about 15 to 20 years. Thanks. So it's a little bit different. Yep. That motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine, adopt resolution determining the amount of tax levy for airport purposes. So we've adopted resolution uh, determining the tax levy for airport purposes. Kind of say your name and address, please. Yeah, Sam Seafelt, 1209 South Willow Street. The airport is 5400 East the, the increase uh, for the salaries is basically, yes, we are currently continuously adjusting our, our employee level, trying to maintain a full staff situation. What ends up happening is we um, have continuously been short staffed in the past two years. And so you have to commonly adjust for applying overtime and, and different things like that. And overtime when other employees are on holidays, we have to work uh, seven days a week, five a.m. to midnight. 
uh, including holidays. So it's it's just a, a rough ballpark of where we do. It's our best guess of where we'll be next year. Um, but yes, we, we are continually short staff trying to fill the roles that we have for as uh, everything we do out there demands high level of competency and, and training. So we'll, we'll take that. I appreciate that. I, I guess in, in light of where we are with the budget and everything and the other departments were asking for reductions and then you came in with an increase, I was kind of curious why that was the well, yeah, the, the, the total uh, request actually did go down slightly from the previous year from uh, 1,137,000 down to 1,111,000. So that, that's the total, including the, uh, the, the funds required for debt service. So it's, uh, it, we, we did attempt to go down in as many categories as we could for that effort. And I might add that this is Mike Jacobson, uh, 3020 West Leona Street. I'm, I'm the chairman of the airport authority. Um, I would just add that it's probably important for everybody to understand kind of where we've been with the airport. Uh, as you know, we used to have SkyWest, which was really a pathetic excuse Sorry. for an airline. Great Lake was a pathetic excuse for an airline. And then we got SkyWest. And when you start looking at the emplanements, okay, that we're doing today versus what we were doing before. Just keep in mind that besides the fact that we have reliable service now that's that's coming in with that late flight, that early flight, that's causing a need for additional employees to be able to staff that wider range of flights coming in and out that actually are carrying passengers, okay? Coupled with that is keeping the runways open. Uh, Sam, since Sam's been here, um, we always keep the runway open. We're out there on the front end of a snowstorm, during the snowstorm, and we're keeping the runways open so we're not having cams with flights, and so it's also there, there for general aviation. That wasn't necessarily always done in the past. Uh, the other thing is that when you look at the number of passengers coming through the airport facility, much more maintenance and so on that has to occur as well with that. I would tell you that this is a net number, if you recall, Cherie was out there as our assistant manager for many years, and Mike Sharkey was the manager. Uh, Cherie has since retired. Sam's come in as the, as the new manager, replacing Mike. And then we've continued to beef up staff uh, and cross-train everybody so that we can have everybody trained on fire, uh, everybody trained on, on running all the equipment. Interesting thing with Sam, Sam can run any of the pieces of equipment out there. Uh, so. A lot of this has been really trying to right size where we're at. And the unknown, I think the big unknown this next year is the impact that COVID's had on us and what that's gonna mean for additional work and so on. There's also some airport improvement projects going on at the whole different arena. Um, but uh, I would tell you a lot of the, of the changes in staffing is the increase in numbers because of the wider range of, of flights and the times that are coming in now and the fact that we're actually bringing passengers. Thank you for that correction. And that motion passes. Item number 10, second reading on ordinance number 4040, uh, to accept and approve proposed renewal and revision of Northwestern Land Use Agreement with the City of North Platte. I would like to make a motion to waive the full reading of ordinance for 4040. Second. Second. Okay. And that motion passes. I would now like to make a motion that we waive the third required reading on ordinance for 4040. And that passes as well. Item, item number 10. Oh, sorry. Yeah, pass it now. Yeah. I move that we adopt ordinance number 4040. And 
that also passes. Okay, now we'll move on to item 10A, and that would be to consider resolution concerning the sale and consumption of alcoholic liquor on East 5th Street and North Dewey Street, East 5th and North Chestnut Street during recess on the bricks on August 22nd of 2020. I move that we approve the resolution, resolution consenting to the sale and consumption of alcoholic liquor on East 5th Street and North Dewey Street to East 5th and North Chestnut Street during Music on the Bricks on August 22nd, 2020. Yes, sir. Why wouldn't I remember this? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to try and comment that. I think it's great that you guys are doing this. Uh, in spite of the, the streets being torn up downtown, you guys went ahead and did it. And uh, we didn't let the virus stop you. And I appreciate that probably more. And uh, so thank you. Well, everybody got a question? My question is to go back for city side. You know, I've talked about it in the past. Is there a way to make like a, a district like this where they constantly run these things in the Prairie Arts Center, Espresso Shop, and some of these other entities that they could be more of a permitting process versus them having to come here and, you know, pass some resolution each time? You know, like an entertainment district, like some communities have done. I don't think that's the issue. I, I think that's the issue. I think you could look and see what other communities have done. Yeah. Well, they a nice purchase. Yeah, I know. I'm just curious for future. So that way, sure. it can be exp expedited for some of these groups. You know, it's more administrative than. I think it still takes the same amount of time. You're still going to have to vote on each one of these. You may not. Or each location would have to get a, right. a, a state-approved right. liquor license That's for right. the So they would. This allows them to use if they're only using it occasionally to get a, a permit for that occasion. If they otherwise, if you're going to do like a blanket, you would have to each location, I believe, would have to go and get their own uh, liquor license. Okay, that works then. Chief, does the, the catered license, like we were looking at on the other item, does that that provides them some more flexibility on that, doesn't it? Yeah, if, the cater, if a cater comes in, they can you they can piggyback off of their license for their to be able to sell liquor. So, but then I think they'd still come in forward and get the approval of the city to be able to do that. Then. They would just hold all the liability on the liquor side of it, but um, whether you'd have to approve each one, I don't know. Okay. Any and item number 10B, approved application by the Espresso Shop by Caravan for a special designated, designated license on August 22nd. 2020 from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. on East 5th Street and North East 5th and North Chestnut Street for a beer garden during music on the bricks. I move that we adopt the, uh, or that we approve the application by Espresso Shop by Caravan for a special designated license on August 22nd, 2020 from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. on East 5th Street and North Dewey uh, to East 5th and North Chestnut Street uh, for a beer garden during music on the bricks. And that motion passes as well. And item number 11 is claim. Who do we take claims? Thank you. Thank you. Motion to pass. I would show me any motion to 